from Columbia Union College uh, with a BS in nursing, and she also went to St. Louis University, got her master's degree as an OBGYN nurse practitioner from University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Go Tar Heels. <laughs> she also served in the Air Force. Once again, we're not gonna hold that against it. <laughs> you know how Marines are. I'm sorry, I had to say that. Now, in 2004, Bonzel and Gwen began studying as medical missionaries at Wildwood Lifestyle Center and Hospital in Georgia. And there they learned how to use national, uh, natural remedies, such as herbs and hydro massage and chemical uh, uh, charcoal therapy, and of course, prayer prevention in treating chronic diseases. Uh, and they went on to put the knowledge that they gained during their missionary trips to Haiti, uh, the Bahamas, and also to uh, South Korea, and of course here in the United States. They have two adult sons uh, and eight grandchildren. They currently reside in Council, North Carolina, a little over two hours from here. And of course, they are active members in their church. So it is my pleasure to bring to you Von Zell Chancy as he brings to us our message for today. Von Zell. Amen. Amen. Just too far. <laughs> so we go to Fort Bragg. But um, 
But it's good to be with you, and I pray that we can have a wonderful time together as we share God's word. Amen. 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 I um I would like for our time together to be um, practical. I want to I want to make this message a practical message that we can uh, take with us. Not a whole lot of at this point a lot of um, statistics and numbers, but just make it practical, okay? So if you'll follow me with that this morning. Now, we do have some other presentations as the day goes on. This afternoon, after this message, there's a dinner, and then there's a walk on the Punto, a short walk, and then we'll come back here and we'll have a, uh, about a one hour presentation for this afternoon. And that's when you get a chance to ask some questions, learn about some health concepts, health principles, through numbers and so forth like that, that would be a benefit too. So uh, we don't want to take, don't want to tire you out, but we do want you to be a part of the program as we go through. Can you do that? Amen. Okay, so we look forward to that today as we, as we move forward. Um, Let us start with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads, please. Take care of me, Father. We thank you again so much for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for all that you've done already and what, what you continue to do for us. We thank you, Lord, for your presence with us. And we pray, Lord, that all that we do will be to your name's honor and glory today. Give us the blessings that we need. May we be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Um, Chester, too. This was not working on? Yeah. Kind of like to have my hand. If I could, maybe I should move it up. Sure. I'll just keep it up. Okay. We can do that in education. We can do that in, in um, 
in hell. <coughs> Reveal Christ to the world and to be obedient, obedient to God's plans in our lives. Being obedient to what God has for us to do. That's why we should look at reforming our lives. Now we talk about makeover. Having a makeover. Okay? Because we are God's property and we're looking forward for God's return. Story after story 
of the experiences my wife and I had when we used the health message and was able to get into somebody's home and then share the Lord with them and relieve their suffering. Amen. That's the function, one of the functions of the health message. It's not that it's missing, it's just with it. We're not using it like it ought to be you. You want to reach people, use the health message. Because all of us have some problem and we want somebody to help us with it. Mm -hmm. And we want it for, for free. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they're, 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 they're God has given us um, modalities to help with um, relieving that suffering. There are things like hydrotherapy. Works wonderful. Um, diet therapy, which we're going to talk about. There are things that you don't have to spend your money buying the drugs and the pills, and all, but God has a plan. Amen. A plan that would work, Amen. that would help us to relieve the suffering. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the things we want to talk about this afternoon. Okay. <clears throat> now, God's plan. Here's God's plan. God's plan is a plant-based plan. It's a plant-based plan. Amen. This is the original plan that God gave uh, in the Garden of Eden. No meat. No animals were dying in the, in the garden. It was a no meat diet. Um, even as the Israelites were journeying, journeying from Egypt to the Promised Land, God provided the type of food that he wanted them to have. Amen. This was God's original plan. So when we talk about reform, we're talking about going back to the original plan that God had. Going back to God's original plan. Simply because we want to be obedient to what God has said we should do. It's about being obedient. Amen. It's about being obedient. Amen. If God said it, that's what I want to do. That's what it's about. So as they journey from Egypt to, Can to Canaan, God gave them the food that he wanted them to have. Mm -hmm. Now, they did not always like what God was offering. Mm -hmm. They murmured. Mm -hmm. They complained. Mm -hmm. Give me McDonald's. <laughs> give me Burger King. Of course, they didn't have that then, but that's what they wanted. They wanted the flesh pots of Egypt. Yeah. And God was not pleased with that. And there were times when God would give them the old flesh pots. And it was, and they were stuck themselves, and many of them died. Mm -hmm. That was not God's intention. And even today, it's still not God's intention. Because he says, I know what your machine runs best on. Amen. And when you, when you want you, my son, I don't know our sons, just got him a, a brand new car. He wants to come down, trade vehicles, because he's, he got uh, grandkids here. You know, he got kids. I'll bring it. He got kids. He says, well, look, I'm going to give y'all, y'all take care of my car. I want to take your van so I can load all my kids, kids in. So he said, but when you take it, don't put 87 octane gas in it. Don't put 89 in it. Don't put 91 in it. Put 93 in it. Man, that stuff is expensive. I got to put 93 because that's what the car, that's the plan for the car. It has to have the 93. I went over to Brad the other day and I looked and I said, hey, maybe seven or 235. Oh, not too bad. Up in New York, he's paying three <laughs> way. But, you know, if you want to take care of the vehicle, you got to put what the, what the manufacturer says you got to put in. Mm, right. If you want to take care of God's car, you got to put what God says you got to put in. Amen. It Amen. runs best that way. Amen. Okay, that's what it runs best on. You know, I find it interesting that when I get to the, when we ride the grandkids around, I mean, even at age of two, that we'd be riding in the car and um, one of them would say, um, Papa, can we go to the McDonald's? First of all, don't call me Papa. I'm Pops now. Don't call me Papa. So can we go to McDonald's? I said, why? You know somebody there? <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know what to say. <laughs> so no, we want to get something to eat. Well, we got food at the house. 
What would I want that for? I mean, two years old. Somebody must have taken the McDonald's, and now every time you pass McDonald's, they gotta go to a McDonald's. They gotta go to a McDonald's. And uh, just this week, one of the grandkids, I said to them, I said to them, I said, look, would you prefer that I take you to McDonald's every time you want to go for one week versus I take your cell phone? <coughs> what do you think they chose? Cell phone. They didn't choose no cell phone. They were, I mean, they, they chose to, yeah, they chose to keep their cell phone. That was the yeah, they weren't giving up their cell phone. They, they forget McDonald's, I'm not giving up my cell phone. Now they what? what how old is um, Summer Simone? 12. 12. They're 12 years old now. They're not giving up a cell phone. I said, I'll take you to McDonald's all week. Just give me your cell phone. No, 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 no. Forget it. I'm not giving up my cell phone. Things have changed. I found this interesting statement. And it's found in um, four. Uh, forget it. Selected. No. It's one of the spiritual prophecies. Spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. I think that's what it is. Um, one of the spiritual spirit prophecy books. Interesting statement. It says after the flood, that people ate largely of animal food. Well, after the flood, you know, it wiped out the vegetation and so forth and so on. Now God, of course, could have grown up a bunch of vegetation and, and compensated for it. But God saw that the ways of men were corrupt and that he was disposed to exalt himself against, proudly against the creator and to follow the inclinations of his own heart. Now look at the next thing. And he permitted that long-lived race to eat meat, to eat animal food. Why? To shorten their sinful lives. To shorten their sinful lives. You ever seen that statement before? to shorten their sinful lives. Mm. God permitted animal eating mm. to shorten the life of people. And you wonder why you're only living the, you know, if we can make it to 70, 80, 90. And if you look at the, 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 the age of, of a man over a period of time from before the flood on, maybe 600 years, 500 years, 400, look at their age after the flood. It decreased like this. Mm -hmm. It went down just like that. Now we can, I mean, we make it to 70, we're praising God. But God says, I permitted them to eat me because of the sinfulness of man. And they'll be sinful, sinful. They're not going back to what they were doing before the flood. I got to do something to stop them from living wrong and sin it, here's what I'll do. I'll let you eat some meat. I'll let you eat some animal food. I'll let you go to Burger King. I'll let you go to McDonald's. That will shorten your life. Interesting statement, isn't it? That will shorten your life. Has it been doing that? Mm. You know, I'm just trying to help somebody. Just trying to help somebody. That will shorten your life. Soon after the flood, the race began to rapidly decrease in size and in length of years. There were a class of very large animals which per uh, perished after the flood. Why? Because those animals were so huge, and it, by man getting smaller, living shorter, it would have, it would have, it would have wiped them out. God knew that the strength of man would decrease. And these mammoth animals could not be controlled by your feeble after they started eating animal flesh. That's serious. That's serious. Permitted the long lived race to eat animal food to shorten their lives. Um, Norma Linda University. Some of you may know Norma Linda University. Mm -hmm. out of California, they did a study and um, they found that seven day adventists on average live about 10 years longer than the other 
of the population. Because we do have a health message. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be as um, vibrant and useful as it should be, but we do have a health message. And we do practice some of those health principles, like um, clean and unclean foods, as it's expressed in Leviticus. That's still prominent today. God still is asking that we follow that, that those principles. So, but on average, about 10 years longer, some of the longest living people, um, you may have seen it in um, National Geographic some years ago, there were three groups of people on this earth that had the longest living. It was uh, those in Okinawa, there was someplace else, I can't remember, and Seventh-day Adventists in California area. Mm -hmm. Those are the longest living. Because of the health message. Folks, there, there is a health message. It's God's message. The message that he gave us way back in the Garden of Eden. Science is catching up mm -hmm. with what God said long ago. Mm -hmm. It's catching up. Now, when we look back at the um, diseases of those Egyptians, way back, those that were eating largely flesh foods, whether whether Israelites came out of and said, "Let me go back to that." It's interesting that what they, those Egyptians, were dying of, is the same things that we are dying of today. Let me show you, for example. This lady, Dr. David of Manchester, um, she discovered that the mummies died from the same thing. She did some autopsies and discovered that those mummies of the Egyptian mummies died from heart disease. What were they eating? Flesh pots of Egypt. Mm -hmm. That's what they wanted to go back to. They were dying of heart disease, cancer, hardening of the arteries, high blood pressure. She did x-rays on 14,000 mummies. Um, of he, he found that the mummies died from heart disease, cancer, arthritis, diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, and rheumatism. Now, I bet you at least two of you in here got one of those. <coughs> at least two of them. <coughs> uh, at least two. Mm. I'm just trying to help somebody. Yes. The same thing that they were dying of. We're dying of today. Amen. And the same lifestyle they had back then is what we're having now. That's why we need a reform. Amen. Um, a few years ago, actually in 2000, I was in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, I had gone down there to visit my wife. She was just still in the military then. I was out. And uh, I was up in the, living up in a place called Berrien Springs, Michigan. That's where Andrews University is. And so I'd gone down there to visit. Uh, I think it was just for a weekend. Up in Andrews in Michigan, the weather was cold. It was still, I think there was even snow still on the ground. And down in San Antonio, it was hot. It was hot, humid, it was hot. I have had an allergy since I was a kid. I had an, al I've had an allergy, not anymore, but I had an allergy when I was a kid. My allergy was probably the worst of anybody in the world. It was a seasonal allergy. Every time the pollen comes out, I'm telling you, it had to be. I, it must be the worst in the world. My eyes were itching so bad. I would rub and rub and rub, rub them till they're red, rub them till they're hot. I could take Visine, dump it in my eye, I couldn't feel it. I didn't know I even had Visine in my eye until it started running down my cheek. Then I could feel it. My eyes, I mean, I'm pulling mucus out of my eyes. I'm just pulling mucus. And I did this for years, years. And I don't care where I went, whether I'm in Germany, where I was in Hawaii, wherever, when it came down to 
uh, pollen season, it all caught up with him mm. every time. The military getting shots didn't do a thing. I'm down, <clears throat> I'm down in San Antonio. Now, <clears throat> my wife and I were vegetarians at the time, which means that we didn't eat meat. But we weren't, we, um, we were still eating uh, dairy products, we were eggs, butter, <clears throat> milk, um, cheese. cheese, that sort of stuff. But we weren't vegan. So this particular um, day I was there, and uh, it was hot. And um, she was living in Wilford Hall. I don't know how many of you know anything about San Antonio, Wilford Hall. And um, this particular day, I heard a voice, clear. I heard a voice. It said, Bonzo, go vegan. Now, I know it wasn't my wife's voice, because it didn't say sweetheart. <laughs> it said, Bonzo, go vegan. Just like that, go vegan. I said to my wife that day, I said, you know what? I'm going to be here. You going what? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to be here. Now, when God tells you to go be here, or he tells you anything, you obey him. You obey what God says. So I said to my wife, I said, I'm going to be here. She said, well, I, you go ahead. So I said to myself, well, if God told me to go vegan, God's going to help me fix some vegan meals. But I'm going to be here because God said go vegan. She came on board about two days later, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so on my way back to San, to um, Andrews, to Berry Springs, Michigan, I left. I'm driving down the road. It's hot. I got no air conditioning in this car. So when I rolled the windows down, all that pollen and everything was blowing in my eyes. So I rolled the windows up, and I'm sweating like crazy. I'm rubbing my eyes, they're red, I'm, they're burning out of my I'm just having a miserable time. So I, um, I get just a little bit past San Antonio, and I've got to go to the restroom. So I pull into a restroom area, and um, I go to the rest area there, and my, I, I, mean, I can barely see, my eyes are red and itchy, and I look, and then I go in. I get inside, and I start looking. I said, man, San Antonio and Texas must be trying to save money on urines. <laughs> so I said, OK. So I go over to the stall, and um, I'm standing there taking care of things. And I noticed somebody sitting be, somebody in the next stall. They were sitting, because I could see the shoe. I don't know, shoe or sneak or whatever. So I'm doing taking care of things. I finish. And I go out and I'm at the sink and I'm washing my eyes out. Looking in the mirror, I'm washing them, washing them. And uh, then the person comes out um, and they come, and as they come out, we look at each other and I said, oh, one of us must be in the wrong bathroom. Mm -hmm. oh. I said, and the lady takes off, she takes off out of there. I said, well, it must be me. <laughs> so I heard her finish my eye. And then I, I head on out, and I said, man, I better get out of here. <laughs> because that lady may will tell her husband's a pervert in here. And she get his, he get his friends, and they come in here, and they just beat me up. And, and my eyes are so red that I won't be able to give a report as to who did the last blow because I can't see. So I said, I better get out of here. Just as I'm trying to get out, another lady comes in, and I said, I'm sorry, and I'm just dashing out, out, the, out the restroom. And I ain't looking neither right or left, I just know where my car is. I'm heading for my car, I get in my car, and I take off. And I head on back up to Barry's friends. You know, I said, maybe this is another way God is trying to tell me, go vegan. Lines up, you need to go vegan. Go vegan. You know, um, that was an uh, interesting time in our lives then because I was there at Andrews 
um, doing a number of things. One was I was working on my instrument, really. That was tough. That took me a year to get an instrument. Any pilots in here? No pilots in here? Shame on y'all. No pilots? All these military, no pilots? And I'm working on my instrument right now. It takes me a year to get through that. In addition to that, I'm teaching in Barron's and Bitten Heart. Anybody know anything about Barron's Spring, Bitten Heart and Machine? You do. I'm teaching in Bitten Heart, middle grades. That was a challenge. Our youngest son, <coughs> Um, the elder here mentioned two boys. The elder boy was a rascal. He was a pure rascal at that time. My wife said, Don't leave him here in San Antonio with me. You take him up there to Andrews with you. <laughs> so he's up there to Andrews with me, getting himself in trouble, gets kicked out of the Adventist school there. He's getting put in juvenile. Three o'clock in the morning, police are banging on the door throwing over mattress and stuff. What's going on? What's going on? I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a time. You know, some of you may have children like that. Let me tell you, you do what you're supposed to do. God's going to bless you. Amen. You just be obedient. Amen. You just be obedient. God's going to bless you. You know, we sent him for education before. We sent him to be happy in the schools when we were young. We did what we were supposed to do. We took care of that three-legged school, mm -hmm. the home, the church, and the school. Mm -hmm. We did our part. We were obedient. And when you're obedient, God's going to reward you. Amen. No matter how, where they stray, whatever they do, God's going to reward you. Help me for them. Do what God says. He's going to reward you. Amen. Amen. So all year, I'm dealing with this. And then on top of that, I decide, I'm going to take shuttle lessons. So I started taking child lessons. I had my plate full. Now, you know, I say all of that because I'm just trying to help somebody. Amen. You may have some of these issues, but I'm just trying to help you. Um, but the thing about it is, be obedient. Amen. God says what you should do. Do it. Amen. He left Andrews, left that area, went down to Texas, got into one of our Adventist colleges there, just made it by one point to get in, got in, Amen. did nothing but spend our money, <laughs> and then decides he's going to break into a bank <laughs> after hours. What are you going to get out of the money? You think I need money laid on the counter? <laughs> he's going to break into a bank after hours, and he gets caught, and so he gets sent to prison. 10 years, oh. up for 10 years, oh. they commuted down to five, we're praying like crazy. Lord, we did our part. We were obedient. Amen. We were obedient. Amen. We did our part. He did our year and something like three months. Thank you. But God got a hold of him. Amen. Amen. God got a hold of him. Amen. And, uh, God gave him an ultimatum. God heard his voice. He heard God's voice. Right? Yes. To be obedient. God told him, he said, Aaron, get it right now or it's too late. Mm. He heard it distinctly. Distinctly. Get it right now or it's too late. We're down in Baton Rouge. He called us. We're at Wildwood. And then he's one of our livestock so he called. And he said, he said, no, he didn't call. He sent a text. 11 o'clock at night. A phone lights up. I felt alone and friendless. I got up, I went to the bathroom with that text, and I said, what do I say? I said, you know, we did everything we right for you. I could, and I said, I could tell him that. I could tell him that you, you made a mess of things yourself, so forth and so on and so on. I could tell him that too. But I said, Lord, what did I say? I took up my cell phone, tapped that in, and said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. He said that man, when I got that, that was that lit me up. From then on, it went on and on and on to get his life changed. Any of you watch 3 a.m.? You ever watch um Daydream Network? You ever watch the New Journey? You ever seen the New Journey? He hosts a show on the New Journey. And now he's just 
just got picked up by Northeastern as a pastor of Bloomfield. Praise Praise do what God says do. Yes. Whether it's health reform, education reform, yes. dress reform, we are not our own. Amen. Do what God says do. Be obedient and God will do his part. Yes. God will do his part. Perfect health depends on perfect circulation. You ever heard that? Perfect health depends on perfect circulation. Meat and dairy. Oh, let me, let me, let me, let me, I gotta, I gotta tell you this about the allergies, right? When God said go vegan, I went vegan, Got back in 2000, every year, my allergy got better and better and better and better to now, in the last few years, I have had nothing that comes out of my eyes, rubbing my eyes or itching my eyes since that time. I'm telling you, it works. I'm telling you that it works. My allergy is gone. I don't even worry about it. Um, summertime anymore. I, I, I don't put gargles on in the summer to keep the up. I do none of that because you see, the shots wasn't what was needed. Um, nothing was needed but a lifestyle change. And when I made that change to stop putting that um, dairy in my system, it cleared out the mucus that was building up in my system. And that's what happened. Yeah, that's all it was. All those years, I needed to just change my diet. And when I changed my diet, my allergy, I'm telling you, it's 100% compared to what it was. So what I'm saying is, folks, when God says, do something, do it. Okay? Now, the thing about circulation, meat has no fiber. Dairy has no fiber. So that means that when you eat something from, or any piece of meat, or any dairy, it's going to stay in the gut for a long time. It just stays there. Because it doesn't have the you know, the, what your parents would call roughage. You need some roughage, boy. You need some roughage. <laughs> so it doesn't have that roughage. And so, um, so what you get is that you get this it, constantly packing in, packing in, because there's no fiber in meat or dairy. We were, my wife and I were doing a presentation, and um, through St. Louis. No, it was in that, it was in Nevada. And a lady came up to us and she said, Do you have something for um, for constipation? We said, Well, um, yeah, there's an herb called Senna. S E N N A. You ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah Senna. So there's an herb called Senna. Try taking that and um, and that should help you. About two days later, she came back and said, you know, I took that center, and that I had my first bowel movement in about four weeks. The first bowel movement I made. Now, you can sit in a tea, um, a tea, and if you take it like that, it'll go like the mess out of you. But you can get capsules. Capsules work better. Get you some center capsules. It works real good. But I think it was like four weeks, six weeks, something like that. First bowel movement you had because she were having no circulation. The, 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 um, the uh, meat just packing in, packing in, packing in, packing in, packing in, and you're not relieving anything. Perfect health depends on perfect circulation. You see, if you don't go to the bathroom after a while, your face don't start breaking out, you may start itching. You, I mean, you just feel miserable because the circulation has stopped up. You know, you see what I'm saying? Perfect health depends on perfect circulation. 
Now, man, let me try to help you here for a little bit. <clears throat> Some of you might like to drink those, um, what do you call it, place cappuccinos? Cappuccinos? Um, um, what's the place you buy this? Starbucks. Starbucks. Starbucks, yeah, Starbucks. Some of you might like the Starbucks. Starbucks, cappuccinos, and uh, Mountain Dews, Pepsi, coffee. All of them have something in common. What is it? Caffeine. It's caffeine. It's caffeine. It's caffeine. Caffeine is a vasoconstrictor. It constricts the blood vessels. Now, I'm just trying to help somebody. It constricts the blood vessels. So men, when things don't get up and go like they ought to, it could be because you ain't got good blood flow. Now, you understand what I'm saying? Because it's a vasoconstrictor. constrictor. Now, I'm just trying to help somebody here. Now, I know I'm, I'm going to men a little bit. But you may need to get off that coffee and that Pepsi and that Coca-Cola because your blood vessels is throughout the body is causing a restriction from the use of that caffeine. That, that caffeine. And um, you know, and then later on in the evening your wife starts saying only thing that getting up is the blood pressure. <laughs> the only thing that's going up. And then I'm just trying to help a little bit. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. I know I'm going to mend it a little bit, but I'm just trying to help somebody. <laughs> but not only does caffeine affect blood flow, but problems with arthritis high blood pressure, headaches. For those of you who like drinking caffeine, caffeinated beverages, try getting off that stuff for about a week and see if you don't develop headaches because it's a drug and you gotta withdraw from it. And it just keeps you. Leviticus chapter 11, 17 verse 11 states this. And you can look it up somehow. This is for the life of the flesh is in the blood. If you don't have good blood flow throughout the body, then that area does not function the way it ought to. Life without blood dies. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just trying to help somebody. Life without blood dies. You want good blood flow? Then you need to get those arteries open and stay away from those things that are constricting the blood flow. Constricting blood flow. Now, some of you say, well, there's a lot of challenges to changing over from a, um, a meat diet to a plant-based diet. There's a lot of challenges. And you've got all kinds of reasons, and here's some of your reasons. You say it takes too long to prepare when you've got to be a, a vegan or a vegetarian or a vegan diet. It takes a long time to prepare. You know, you've got to be a little bit more creative. I agree. you got to be a little bit more creative. A crock pot can be your friend. You can cook something in a crock pot, let it cook overnight, next morning you get up, boom, you're ready to go for it. Okay? It's there. Um, but you're going to have to be a little bit more creative and what you and what you uh, and how you do things. Now, some of you are probably not eating breakfast in the morning. Amen. Amen. Oh, okay. Some people are honest. The rest of us are not eating breakfast in the morning, but don't want to admit it. And yet, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. The most important meal of the day, and you're not eating your breakfast. Uh, you might, and I'm not talking about a nap, 
or a soda and a donut. That's not breakfast. I'm talking about breakfast. I'm talking about breakfast. Now, when I was in the military and they were calling an alert, they're calling an alert. I get up and I'm gonna have breakfast before I go for the alert. I gotta have my breakfast. Breakfast is huge in our family. We'll eat breakfast and we won't need to eat another meal. Sometimes we'll go from seven o'clock eating that breakfast and we won't eat again until four. It'll hold us that long. Yeah. That's right. It'll hold us that long. Four, sometimes even longer. Now, if you are used to getting up in the morning, driving to one of the fast food restaurants. By the time you get your meal, I could have already eaten mine. Because I crock potted it, all I gotta do is take it, put it in the bowl, put some other stuff on it, banana, fruit, whatever, and I could be eating. Now here's where yours go. You get up in the morning, you head out the door, and look at the time that you're spending. You go out the door and you drive to Burger King. Time it takes for you to get the Burger King, then you gotta get in that long line and wait for to get to the window. You're waiting there. Then you get your food and you're heading down wherever you gotta go to work. Then maybe you're eating it on your way to work, but you're going, you gotta get to work. You sit down, maybe get there a little early, now you gotta start eating your food. You just spent, you spent 15, 20 minutes just getting your meal. I've already put mine in the bowl, sat down, started eating, good breakfast, relax, and I'm, I'm ready. By the time you finish eating that breakfast, ready to go to work at 8 o'clock, by 10 o'clock, you're hungry again. By 10 o'clock, you're hungry again. Not only that, but what did you put in? You packed in two Happy Meals, I guess I didn't see him on the billboard, billboard. I'm going to take the great kids, but Happy Meal or whatever. So you got your meat, your cheese, your egg, your bread. What else are you getting? Coffee. Coffee? No, okay. But you're not going to get anything all that. That's done. <laughs> your coffee? No, I know. <laughs> By 10 o'clock, you're ready to eat again. Now, what has happened to that meal? That meal is stepped about right here. It's not about right there. I have put so much fiber in mine in my 20 minutes that by two hours, I'm going to the bathroom. Yours is still there. You're hungry again. So you're hungry, so you go down and you get something else and you pack that on top. And then you pack something else about four hours later, you pack that on top. And then you pack something. By the end of the day, by the end of the day, you are That's all you do is pack it up at the food, and you're still not satisfied. And at the end of the day, you're ready to sit down late in the evening and eat a big meal, and that's why you don't want to eat breakfast in the morning, because you ate that big meal and you ain't burning off. Now, if you want to take a flight from here to California, when would you prefer to put your fuel in the plane? Before you left or when you got there? Before you left, because you're going to burn it, right? So why you wait till the end of the day to put the fuel in the plane? Just want to sit on the toilet. So the next morning, you're not going to burn anything. You're not hungry to put anything in. But by that time, you have packed and packed, and you do that the next day. You pack and pack, and you do it the next day. You pack and pack, and you cannot, you, you're not getting rid of it. And you've got a, a, a meal that isn't nutritious. No fiber, not nutritious, constipating you, causing other problems, and so you go on and on and on. So, you're gonna have to be a little bit creative. And um, we're going to have a cooking class where we're showing you how to be creative. I'm not sure when that's going to be at this point. But um, maybe this afternoon we we'll have time to share with you. My wife can. What you can do. Inconvenient when traveling. Yeah, it is a little bit inconvenient. That's probably the most inconvenient time for us is when we're traveling. But here's what we do. We fix our food before we leave home. We actually put it in containers. Now, it takes a little bit of time to get where we're going. Our kids are always complaining. Y'all supposed to be there two hours early. 
earlier and we're two hours late. Yeah, because we stopped at the at the pilot gas station, put it in the microwave, heated it up, sat down, and eat our food or eat at a restaurant. But you have to be a little bit more um, creative when you travel. And so we fix that food. But you know what? That's a nice time to do that and have a nice serious talk with your spouse. You're sitting there with your food and you have that serious talk. And you say, look, honey, you know what? With the money we're saving by not going to those fast food restaurants and spending all our money, we could buy ourselves a camper. We could buy a camper, pull off the side, fix our food right inside the camper, and we can uh, then enjoy ourselves. Nice serious talk. Yeah, because you save your money. Save your money. But another thing that people always want to know, well, if I start to eat, becoming a vegetarian or vegan, where am I going to get my protein? Where am I going to get my protein? Everybody wants to know where they want to get protein. Anybody have an orange this morning? Anybody have an apple? Anybody have a banana? Oh, okay. You got some protein. Anybody have any collard greens yesterday? Any green leafy vegetable? You got some protein. Anybody had any um, broccoli? Anybody had any... Um, there's protein in so much of what we eat that you don't have to go out and think that I got to get a big T-bone steak to get protein. You don't. And for most of us, we're eating too much protein. Too much protein. And it's harmful on the kidney. We'll talk a little bit about that later this afternoon. And some of us, you know, the reason is that, you know, I just don't want to. I just don't want to. I don't want to judge my diet. I don't want to be obedient. God said that I should do such and such. God said that I should change the way I eat. God says that I need to be obedient. But I just don't want to. And that's, that's right. God gave us a choice. If that's your choice, that's your choice. But for every ill, there's a pill and a bill. Now you can make the choice. If you don't want to make the change, then, you know, when we were at Wildwood Lifestyle Center, patients would come in and they would have their paper bag. And they would have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 medications in there. Medications. That's a lot of money, and that's a lot of um, drugs. And then you end up with one thing over another, this one to combat that one, this one to combat that one. But let me put a little plug into our lifestyle center. How many of you are familiar? I think this is my last slide, so I'm going to talk just for a couple minutes. How many of you are familiar with our lifestyle centers? The Adventist lifestyle centers. Okay, we got Wildwood. We got Eugene Pines, we got Black Hills, we got um, Eden Valley, throughout the United States, different ones. They all work essentially the same to get, help get you better. And um, they do a wonderful job. They do a wonderful job. I've been there with the physicians, and then when a patient comes in, the patient brings a bag load of pills, like 12 bags, 12 pills in the bag. They take that bag and look at it and say, you don't need that one. 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 They've got about four or five of them. Some of them you just can't get, get a person off right away. So you got to work with it. Because they can substitute away early. Substitute with some hydro. And, 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 and they're going to put you on a plant-based diet. Walking in the door. No caffeine. Plant-based diet. And in about 17 days, they are praising God for the miraculous um, change. Healthy form. I'm telling you, it's fantastic how the world works. Because when we follow God's plan, God is going to reveal himself in his plan. He's going to reveal us. All it requires is that we be obedient to do what God wants us to do. Amen. Wants to do for us. Um, I'm sorry. Can you go back just for a second? No, no. The, the next one. Yeah. Um, you know, 
even if we make changes, it doesn't guarantee that you're never going to get sick again. We're going to die unless some of us are here alive when Christ comes. But, but everything is basically what a reduction in the percent of change that takes place. In other words, you can reduce your chance of having diabetes by a certain percent, by, by, by living a certain lifestyle, by making some change. It's percent of change. And so what we want to do is we want to do things that will reduce the chances of something negative happening. You understand what I'm saying? And so God works with that. But we have a choice and we have to make a decision that that's what we're going to do. I think it's going to ask me. So what should our attitude be? God help me. God help me. You know why, God, I want you to help me? Because I want to trust and obey what you want best for me. You designed this body. You know what's best. Help me to be obedient. Help me to trust what you say that I should do. So that's, 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 that's what it is. God, God wants the best for you. The best for us. Give him a chance. Just obey what he says to you. You want to glorify God. That's the other reason why you want to do it. Glorify God. Glorify him. You know, so often we look at going to heaven. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. What's the minimum I can do to get to heaven? Or can I do this and not and, and, and still make it in? We all want to. Folks, don't worry about heaven. What about glorifying God? Because if you glorify God, you'll be doing what God wants you to do. And don't worry about heaven. Heaven will be there for you. Do what needs to glorify God. But God said, glorify me in your, in your body and in your, what's the other part? Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, do all to the glory of God. There you go. Whatever you eat or whatever you drink, do all to the glory of God. Glorify God. Don't worry. We're concerned about what I want. I want heaven. I want heaven. God says, I want you to glorify me. Don't worry about you. Glorify me. You, I'll get you there. You glorify me. I'll get you there. Amen. And then go ahead and say, Lord, help me to make the change. Now, this afternoon, we got some papers. It's called Making the Change. Some steps that you can take to help you make that change. Lord, help me to make the change. Jeremiah 31, 3 and 4 says, Yea, I love thee, God says, with an ever-loving, everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built. God wants you to be in the best, best health condition that you can be in because he loves us. So we do it because we love him. Amen. And so we want to be obedient to do exactly what God says. God will bless us. Amen. 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 Dear God, Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your presence with us and sharing with us what you would have us to do with these old feeble bodies we have. We rededicate these bodies to you, that you would impress upon us that we would hear your voice, that we would be obedient to what you want from us to take care of your property. We thank you, Lord, that you care for us that much, that you've given us chance and chance and life, another chance of life so that we may get it right. And we ask, Lord, that uh, we would make the right decisions. Bless us and keep us, and may we be a blessing to others. And may we make reforms in our lives, not only in our health, but in all aspects of our lives, may we dedicate ourselves to you, that we may glorify you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
You may sit.